Justin Pontier here on the Mixed Morning Grind. A special guest joining me from Young Farts RV Parts, coming straight off of the Dragon's Den, Jagger Glowatsky. Jagger, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Let's uh, go back to the beginning here. For those who maybe didn't see you on Dragon's Den, let's talk a little bit about Young Farts RV Parts and how this whole thing got started. So I was uh, buying and selling cars in high school and uh, a year after high school, I think I sold about 150 cars. So I needed to become a legal dealership. So I was looking around and the only place I could find a cheap enough building was out in uh, Mundere. And uh, my brother got out of high school. We started uh, buying and selling cars together. And then we started uh, flipping RVs. And then we ran into an RV that was actually just way too hard to sell because it was sight unseen at an auction and nobody wanted to buy it. So we're like, oh, what do we do with this thing? We uh, parted it out. It turns out there's more money in parts than actually flipping these things. So we had the building already. We're like, okay, let's... uh, Let's buy 40 RVs, strip them, uh, strip them down, and we bought like 30 grand worth of new parts. We put a little motorhome on the side of the highway, said new and used RV parts, and all of a sudden it just it just blew up. Uh, the thing is, there's just not many people doing used RV parts out there, and uh, so it's a, it's a really good alternative for people, and, it, and that's kind of how the story started. Well, that's true. Like you, you said, you know, you found a hole in the market here. Uh, a massive one, and it's obviously paved dividends at this point. And you you said something too on the Dragon's Den uh, that you know uh, typically RV people are do-it-yourself type of people, and I've definitely noticed that that's the case. That's got to be a driving force behind the business as well. Hundred percent. And you know what? Even the used is a great alternative. But the fact that we were in a small town, we were able to sell new very very cheap. And it seems to be that like most places so say you need an rv part most places you're going there's no one that is just strictly rv parts you're always right. going to an rv dealer who's also got all these a massive overhead for one but two they really want to sell you on okay these parts are really expensive maybe i can talk you into getting into a new rv so sure. having a place where people can actually buy cheap new rv parts too is just uh something that's out of the norm as well and i i'm surprised it is but it uh yeah. Well, yeah, just for how common it is. I mean, you drive by any of these RV uh, storage places on the side of the highway, they're chocked full. There's a ton of them in our area. You go across across the province, there's people with RVs and lots of them. And it's not like, you know, you have Napa, for example, or different businesses that specialize in parts or whatever. That exactly. just doesn't happen when it comes to RVs. Exactly. And I'm surprised then, but I think most people took the more of the dealer selling route. Like maybe the numbers look better. Maybe they're making more off that. But I think because we focused on strictly RV parts, uh, it's really changed the game in quite a few ways. Definitely. Now let's talk a little bit about the Dragon's Den. Uh, the, the blooming of the idea from the get-go, was it your idea? Was it your brother's idea? When did you decide, okay, we're going to apply for this? Not necessarily was, knowing you're going to get accepted, but what was the start of it? It was actually my idea and it was our first year being open. I said, you know what, Dawson, like we're two young brothers. We didn't know if the actual business model would work good, but I'm like, you know what, it might be a good enough story to land us on. So we sat there and uh, we sat in the garage. We were poster boards making points thinking of everything we could and once we uh once the auditions were actually happening we had to drive to Edmonton to do them um we never ended up going and you know what it was it was a good thing we didn't because we definitely weren't ready at that time in our business and then uh COVID hit so they started saying you can send in a video for auditions and you know we kind of make funny videos so I'm like okay right up our alley so we sent one in and this was two years ago and uh we didn't hear anything from it. So then this year, I just sent the same video in again because, hell, why not, right? Yeah. And then uh, we ended up getting a call back saying, hey, would you guys want to do an audition? So you, you actually go up on a Zoom meeting, and they pretend to be the Dragons. And it, re- it went really well. So then a month and a half after that, we got a call saying, hey, you guys are on. You're going to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a thrill when you got that call. Oh, 100%. The whole family was stoked. Well, and I'd imagine there's a little bit, like obviously the excitement there, but then there's probably a little bit of thought like, hey, okay, this is a possible business deal here too. So how how do we want to set up the business deal? I'd imagine there was a lot of time spent on that. There was, and you know what? We aren't uh, uh, math people or book people with the, and you know, so many people are going on there and getting roasted about their numbers. So we're like, yeah, yeah. I did my numbers as best as I could as, as far as I knew how and surprisingly I did half decent um but uh we decided you know what we're gonna go in cheaper than we should 
just because that way, if we go in cheaper than we should, maybe nobody will like, give a shit about our numbers. Yeah, so, yeah, no, and for worked. sure. And it worked because <laughs> when we went right. in, nobody even cared about the numbers because uh, what we had put was on such a low scale that they're like, okay, you're like, this sounds fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't definitely. have any explaining to do. <laughs> So once you get to Toronto, what's what's the process like? Is it a multi-day shoot or how does that all work? Oh, so it, it's actually very simple. Like uh, the only, we had to go three days before and the only reason for it was because of our skit. So we had to get the uh, trailer to actually bring on to the show. And it was quite a, a show, if I can say that. Well, that, that was good. That was one of my questions is, did you guys haul that trailer or did you just get it while you were there? So, so I called this guy on Kijiji and uh, I called him and I said, listen, man, like I want to buy your trailer, but I'm, I'm a week away and I just need it to go on Dragon's Den. I'm going to be chopping it up. And he couldn't really believe it. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm not, I'm not kidding you, man. Like, honestly, like I'll just eat transfer the money right now. He's like, well, I can't keep it here. So I had to call a tow truck company. The tow truck company came and uh, picked it up and kept it in their impound yard. And uh, so we get there. And the producers told us, they're like, man, you're going to, you're going to need to order tools. And like, <laughs> we're in Alberta here. So like the tools are always essential. I don't see any time that they wouldn't be. So I'm like, oh, yeah. you know what? It's going to be fine. Yeah. So we get there and it turns out tools are not essentials. So like you couldn't go into Home Depot. You can go into Walmart. And if you did try to order them, they were two weeks away. I don't know what people are doing in Toronto. If their toilet breaks, do they have to call the plumber? He's probably booked solid. So... <laughs> So we ended up going to the tool rental place. We ended up finding all the tools, which is great. And uh, uh, we had to dismantle the entire thing just wherever we could. So, and then we just dropped it off there. They took it and basically went up a big elevator. And uh, once we actually showed up, you just walk in, they took you up an elevator, you sat in a room and then they said, you're on. And it's just a one shot take. We were in there for, we were the first ones of the day. So we were only in there for like two hours. We were in there for an hour on the set and then like an hour just getting ready and whatnot so right wow uh, so and then once it's done they just say okay you're you're out of here so then you just leave they give you some sheets <laughs> and you're like okay <laughs> wow okay so you get up there and you guys do your skit it, it seems to go very very well and you start getting these offers all five dragons make that is a super super rare thing uh, as someone who watches the show all the time that is a, a awfully rare thing and so your mind must have been just spinning at this time oh. or did you guys have like a kind of a plan on who you wanted going into it before going into it we knew michelle had rv easy we knew we were going to be right. taking a huge like we're taking a huge e-commerce path in the business so we're like hey michelle seems to be the most uh most uh one we're going for but in no way or shape or form did we think all five are going to be going for it you know what i mean i i knew yeah. i did feel like one person was going to be going for it but uh once it all happened man like and it doesn't really show in the show but like they they started just telling us their whole life stories and like why they think they can do good for us and it just turned from the, us selling ourselves to them selling themselves on us and wow. man, like I couldn't even hear what they were saying because I was in such shell shock. Like it was going through <laughs> one ear, one out the other. We actually ended up having to go to the box. It doesn't show in the in the episode, but we actually went into that box in the back. Yeah. And we were sitting there going, oh my goodness, like what do we do? Like they're all nice. They all bring different skills. We didn't know what to do. And oh yeah, what a what an experience. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about that RV Easy connection because you would think that there would be some connection there going forward, right? I mean, it seems like the logical thing. Yeah, you know what? It, I think things are li like, uh, we haven't made any uh, deal set in stone yet. A lot's changed in our business since the filming in June. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're still in the process of just making sure we want and she's going to be the right partner and she's on the same route seeing if she wants to and if we're the right partner. So nothing set in stone yet, but. So I, I guess that's the thing too, that a lot of people don't know is that, you know, it, there's some due diligence process afterwards on both sides before that deal is consummated. Right. Totally. Totally. Yeah. So I, I guess, uh, you know, time will tell if that, that pans out, but it, it sure made for an entertaining episode of TV. <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, you know, for, for dragon's den or, or beyond or, or whatever the case may be, whatever happens, uh, what are your hopes and dreams for the business? I mean, you have got 
something fantastic here. Obviously, it's a workable business, and you guys are super, super young, but you know your stuff. So what do you see the next 10, 15, 20 years being like? What's your what's your hopes and dreams, Jagger? Well, I tell you what, uh, it's been three years, and it so much has changed in three years. So, like, you know what, as much as I want to plan for – uh, two or three more ahead like that's a lot of time when it comes to this business it seems like but my big plan is this this year we didn't originally have all of our used parts online and I know by spring we're going to have absolutely all of our used parts online the other thing is we're selling lots and lots to the states right now um, so I, I think eventually we're going to be ending up uh, either setting up another shop in the states or in Ontario to save some shipping but it, it's really going to be the e-commerce side and there's so much to learn I'm the computer guy I, I don't know. I run the website. I create the website. And like, yeah. I tell you what, I came into this knowing absolutely nothing about it. It's just pretty cool that we live in a world where you can actually, if you have the dedication, you can just, you can just learn online. So it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. So expansion definitely is in the future is what you're saying. hundred percent, hundred percent. Sounds good. Well, I, I really appreciate you doing this Jagger. Uh, for those who, who don't uh, know how to get a hold of young farts RV parts, uh, what's your, what's your info? Well, right now we're closed. Our online store is op- op- fully operational. We'll be back open in spring. So just hop on the website. You'll be able to find everything you need. And that website is? Youngfartsrvparts.ca. Jagger Glowatsky, owner of Young Farts RV Parts here on Mix 107. Jagger, thank you very much and all the best. Thanks for having me, man. You take it easy.